<laughs> I've noticed a lot of people selling their daylight LEDs and swapping them out for bicolor. And I think it's because everyone believes that a bicolor unit is more versatile. I can't see you show up for ball. Dog time. <laughs> Just because a light can go from 2700 to 6800 Kelvin doesn't exactly mean it's more versatile, it just means it's more convenient. And when it comes to cinematography and lighting, convenience should not be synonymous with versatility. In my opinion, the brighter a light is, is actually what makes it more versatile. A light with a high amount of luminance will always be more flexible for cinematography because modifiers like diffusion cloths and domes and soft boxes all decrease the brightness. That's why a higher amount of output is way more useful to me than a flexible CCT range because I have not abandoned the simple practice of just using a couple affordable gels. Look, the reality is when a bicolor unit is set to 56 Kelvin, it is significantly less output than its daylight only sibling. And yet those bicolor lights always cost more. You're paying for that convenience, but at the cost of less output. Therefore, in my opinion, less versatility. Meanwhile, if you just put a gel on your daylight only LED, it's going to make it around the same luminance as the bicolor version. This two by one panel right here is the Cream Source Dopio. The bicolor version of this light is called the Bender, and it is actually 78% less output than this daylight only version. It's quite simple to make any daylight LED a bicolor light and yet still have the maximum amount of output when you need to battle the sun. Most bicolor LEDs have a feature where you can tap a button and the light will jump to a series of pre-programmed CCT values, which generally is a cycle of five CCT presets. For example, back when I reviewed the GVM 650B, its presets were 2700 Kelvin, 3200, 4300, 5600, and 6800 Kelvin. And that's pretty basic across the board. Almost every bicolor LED has those CCT presets. I use those numbers as a template to create my own presets for this fixture right here. And if you have one of these Siconic 800 color meters, it's very easy to build a small kit of gels for less than 50 bucks. All I do is take a reading with the meter and then I type in a target color temperature and the meter tells me what gel I need for this light to achieve any desired CCT. So let's start with 2700 Kelvin. For this specific unit, I would need a three quarter CTO or CTS gel to achieve a warm tungsten look. Now I like to use color temperature straw because I learned that CTS just tends to look better on skin tones versus the generic throwback of CTO. Okay, now let's do 3400 Kelvin. For that one, I need a half CTO or CTS. For 4400 Kelvin, I would need a quarter CTO or CTS. And as you can see, a lot of these units come with gel frames to make your life a little easier on set. You see, when this light right here has the gel on, it's actually around the same luminance as its bicolor siblings. The difference is, when I remove that gel, now this light is 78% more output versus its bicolor sibling when that bicolor unit is set to 5600 Kelvin. That's true versatility. And for 6800 Kelvin, all we need is a 1 8 CTB. And that's it, four gels total. You're talking about a $47 trip to film tools. And by just owning those four little gels, this unit is now more versatile than its bicolor sibling. Because again, its output with the gels on is very similar to the bender. If we find ourselves in a situation where we need to battle the sun, this daylight version is going to be 78% brighter. Now granted, I realize we had to put in a little bit more work, but I think that's important to take note of. Convenience is not synonymous with versatility. Not when we're talking about how we use this light. So you have to remember, you're never just gonna set a light up and blast it at someone's face. You're gonna maybe throw a dome on it, a softbox, a chimera. You're gonna use diffusion cloths. You're gonna bring in nets. You're gonna bring in flags. You're going to significantly start decreasing the output of your light. And if you are operating on a very low scale, well now your brightest light actually isn't all that bright, is it? Even if it says Forza 720B on it, it's never gonna be as powerful as the Forza 720D. And yet you can still have the versatility of the bicolor unit if you just took the time and just bought a little $45, $47 pack of gels to use on your daylight only fixture. This is what I'm trying to convey to everyone. Now, if you're balling on a budget, true versatility 
would be just owning both the bicolor and the daylight. But if you're unable to do that, then I really do believe that the smarter investment is the daylight only version and just get a little pack of gels. Now, someone will ask, hey, Justin, what about green magenta shift? Well, guess what? There's gels for that too. But the reality is nowadays, I don't really worry about that because I always have my trusty color meter with me on set. So once all the lighting is set up and I mean everything ready to go, right before we hit record, I just walk over to where the talent is going to be and I take a reading from their mark with the dome facing the camera. And the meter will automatically tell me what tint compensation, if any, I need to dial in on the camera. The trick is you just need to have your desired CCT already plugged into the meter under the target color temp. And I'll probably do a follow-up video because I get asked all the time how I match different manufacturer lights and all of this. And I think you're starting to see from this video how I do that with this Siconic, right? So if I take a reading off of a light with this softbox and diffusion and everything, and it's giving me, let's say 4,700 Kelvin, and I got to go match this other crazy light, all I got to do is go to my meter and set 4700 as my target color temp and then dial it in on the other light, right? So, I mean, this is why I say this is hands down one of the best investments, one of the best tools that I can have in my accessory kit hands down. So there is some food for thought, folks. Have yourself a brighter light, which in my opinion is more versatility and save yourself some dough. Just remember this, in the low budget world, the more output you have from the start will always benefit you more. This is why it's important to understand the tools you're working with. Now, if you wanna learn more, I already did a video a few weeks back on building the most versatile one-ton lighting package. So if you're new here, I've left a link to that down in the description below. Big ups and thank you to today's sponsor, which is the Dog Times Patreon. That's my virtual clubhouse for indie filmmakers with weekly BTS breakdown videos and our own private Discord. Just head on over to patreon.com slash Justin Phillip to join the club today. Thanks for watching, and for now, that is a wrap. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We've all got both light and dark inside us. Don't kill all your dark areas. Those dark areas are going to end up being our shadows. There. <laughs> See this right there? That's Run. Really cool. Look, look, look straight, please. Look straight, Jason. Look straight, Jason. straight towards the wall. Yeah. Sorry. So we are seeing this. Point, point that little bit right there. We'll just fan that off of him. If he's gonna be there looking like this. Baby like cam, what I just do with it? I mean, he's gonna be maybe a but. There we go. Look at them. Look at them. Looking better already. You know what we gotta do though? Let's kill that small rig light. Turn that one off completely. No, 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 the one in the room. Uh, hey, kill yeah. that light in that room. James. Oh, do you, not that one, Thomas. Not that one, just those two.